And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review. Hey everybody, as you know, 18X is one of my favorite kind of games. GMT has just put out a new hefty deluxe version of 1846. This one is set in the Midwest. It goes from Chicago to Pennsylvania area, basically, so it covers the Midwest of the United States. It's one of the more basic 18x games that you could find. So let me show you how it plays. Eighteen forty-six is played in three phases, as you can see at the bottom here. We have the stock round, an operating round one, and an operating round two. In the stock round is where you get the chance to purchase stocks and companies. Let's look at Grand Trunk Railroad as an example. The Grand Trunk Railroad, if you're the first person to buy it, you would get what's called the president's share or two certificates of a company. Anyone else who buys it later would get one certificate. When you first buy it, you're the one who gets to set a price. So you can say, I want to start the Grand Trunk at 100. And you can start the company at 100, which would mean that the president's share is worth 200 and every other share is worth 100. Whoever holds the most shares is the president and controls that railroad and can use it during the operating rounds. Railroads can be taken away if other players buy more shares, then they would get the president's certificate and be the new president of the company. Any shares that are not bought go off to the side. So to start a company, all you need is two shares. Any other shares will just give it more money because as you buy shares, money goes into the treasury, so the company has money to purchase trains, pay for routes, etc. Grand Trunk would start up here, as you see, in Port Huron. While other railroads, the B&O starts here in Wheeling, the Pennsylvania starts in Homewood, the Erie starts over here in Salamanca, and the New York Central starts here in the Erie space. Because this map goes from Buffalo, basically the edge of New York, the western edge of New York, Pittsburgh, all the way over to Chicago on the other side. So in the stock round, you're just competing. You can buy stocks, you can sell stocks. If you sell stocks, you have two different choices. One is you can sell stock into the stock market. If you sell a stock from your personal supply of stock into the stock market, you would get the money value that the stock is worth. If you sell your own stock, the value goes down. If you And instead of 100, now your stock would be worth 90. If anyone else sells your stock, the value does not go down. So people cannot affect your company in this game, which makes it a much safer game as you don't have to worry about your stock being sold and the value of your company going down unless you sell it yourself. Once you have stock and we're, and we're past the stock market phase, then you can operate. And there's two different parts of the operation phase. One part is trains. As you can see, there's different sections of the game. There's train limit one, which is yellow, train section two, green, train section three, brown, and train section four, gray. In train section one, the trains cost $80. You buy them. As you see, there's this part that says phased out, removed, and in, when we get to brown, these trains will phase out, get one more turn. So when you buy a train, you put the train in your company to show that you have a train. There are train limits. In yellow, you could have four trains, green four, then you in brown only three, and in gray only two. When you have a train in your company, now you could run. So on an operating round, there's three things you, you do. First is lay track. And in the yellow phase, you only can ye lay yellow tracks. So in this case, let's just say you're in Port Huron, you might lay this, or you might lay the one that points this way. I'm just gonna pull out one of the Z ones because some spaces have Z, but I'm just gonna put it here. And you might lay this. Now, on in the yellow phase, you get to lay, you have a choice, two yellow tracks or one upgrade. An upgrade, as we get to later phases, 
would be taking a yellow track, keeping its same path, and adding in more to now make it a green track. You must keep the same path it has, but upgrade it. So you either get two yellow builds or an upgrade. And you can upgrade and do a yellow build, but you cannot do two upgrades in a turn. So you only have a choice of one upgrade each turn. You have to be very careful where you want to do your upgrades. So as you build, you could add more and more track. Let's say you add a straight here because you can see you go through here. As long as all of these dots aren't filled by other companies, you still can pass through. Then you can build a curve. You could build another curve. And then you can build a straight. And now you've made it to Chicago. This would take a few operating rounds. But once you make it to Chicago, now you have a route. Those, during the operating round, the second thing you can do, as you see, is you have tokens. In, case, in this case, you could pay $80. And you can put a token out. Now you have a token there, so you're claiming that that's your station. You can run a train through there. When you build track, you have to pay money. The normal cost is 20 per track, but depending where you are, if you have to go through a mountain, you have to pay an extra 40. Here you have to pay an extra 20 because you're breaking a mountain in between spaces. So there's going to be cost to your track that comes out of your company, not out of your personal money, out of your company. When you do have trains, which on the first turn you won't, but on future turns you will buy trains because that's the last part, then you can run. So what you do is, depending on the trains you have, if I had two two trains, I would look at my dot and I would say I can run from here to here and I can run from here to here. And if I do this, this would be, in this case, 40 plus 30 because we're still in the green, in the yellow phase and 40 plus 40 so I'd be looking at a payout of 80 plus 70 or 150 dollars and then you have a choice you have three choices one choice is I want to pay out all the money to the people who own the company in that case every person who owns a share would get 15 dollars so if I had three shares I would get 45 dollars if there were shares in the stock market those shares would get paid back to the treasury the second choice is to 50-50 split it. If you 50-50 split it, then 75, or it gets rounded up for the, for the company, so 80 would go to the company, and then 70, or seven per share, would go out to everyone. Or you could take the whole money, the whole 150, and put it in the company if you need money for future trains, future buying, because the trains become more expensive. You can see they start at 80, but they go up to $900 later in the game. So you're going to need to save some money along the way. When you do the payouts, if you pay out fully to people, it go, your stock market value goes up. If you do half and half, it stays the same. If you keep all the money for the company, the stock value goes down. Depending where you are, in this part section of the board, you can move up twice. So if I pay out, if I'm on the nine space and I pay out at least 180 or double the 90, I can move up two spaces instead of just one. So, and of course, if I pay less than half of 90, only, only 40, I wouldn't move up. So you need to get stronger payouts by building better routes. The last part is buying the trains. And as you can see, there's trains. As the last train gets bought and the first train gets bought of the next, so when these twos run out, when a 3-5 is bought, or for these you could buy either side, a 4, you have the choice of either one. When they are, now we go into the green phase. When we get into the green phase, we do the same thing. We can upgrade. We could upgrade, let's say, Chicago. And now Chicago, your dot would stay, but now you actually have access to the Chicago connections. And you get what's called an east-west connection in this game, where if your train runs from west to east you get an extra payout of plus 50 and plus 20 on either side. So connecting those routes is a key to this. In addition, when you get to the higher trains, there's two different train choices. One is a train that can run to four spaces on the board, or there's what's called a 3-5. In this case, you could run through five spaces and pick the highest three values. So you can skip those spaces that are only worth 10, and you can take the spaces like this one here, Centralia, and instead you could take three spaces that are worth 50 each and make your run worth 150 rather than four where you have to stop at two tens along the way and you might be making less. So those are your choices when you get to 
the operating round. There is two operating rounds, and as the trains get out, money's gonna, money's gonna be paid out to the companies, to the bank, and when you get to that point, eventually the bank will break, which will end the game. There's one last thing in this game, and this is what makes each 18X game unique. It's called the private companies. In, in each game, there are private companies. Every other 18X game has a stock round and operating rounds. The same thing happens again and again and again. You build track, you're building routes, you're trying to make the most money on your routes. But each one has a different beginning and private companies. In this case, there are two small companies, the Big Four and the Michigan Southern. Big Four starts here and Michigan Southern starts here. So you have a small little rail that can build and eventually they turn into a bigger company and you can buy them into your company and you will then get a dot where the original dot was. There's also different contracts. There's like a mail contract where $10 per every location you touch for one train. So you get a plus 10 on every single dot you touch. There's other ones like the Lakeshore where you can upgrade tiles in certain spaces for free, which is these tiles. There's other ones like the Steamboat where you can put a port marker, which will give you bonuses. And those port markers can go out in a port space and then you can get a plus 20 bonus or a plus 40 bonus in a later phase, like over in Holland where it has two ports, you could get a plus 40 bonus if you have Steamboats. So not all of these come out in each game, but some will come out, those will disappear in the brown phase. So from the brown phase on, you're dealing with the big companies, but at the beginning you get some special choices and these special choices is what makes each game unique. So there you have it, that's 1846. It is one of the most simple games of the 18X line. It's one that I highly recommend in this version specifically, this is a heavy box. I would say this box weighs at least five to 10 pounds. You get a lot in here. And it's not just the gorgeousness of the cover here, but the pieces are great. I mean, the cardboard, usually in an 18X game, these hexes are little thin pieces of paper. This is hefty cardboard. Everything in here is solid quality components. And if you're looking to get into the experience, you're gonna get quality components, which to me is important because most people are used to getting, you know, cheap components in an 18X game or very thin thin tiles, thin everything. Here you get cardboard. You get lots of cardboard. I mean, like I said, this is a heavy box and it's a great game. If you're looking for simplicity and in getting into it, here you have simple route building, a simple stock market. You don't have to worry about when you sell your shares or other things, because in this one, if you sell your own shares, it doesn't make the stocks go down. The stocks go up a little at a time, either one time, two time, or, or three times, depending which section you're in. So you don't really have to worry too much about going up and down and crisscrossing and all the other stuff in the complex 18X games. You get a very simple stock market in this game, which I think is good for beginners who want to get into the system. And for me, it's one that I, still play even though i play advanced ones this is one that i still play i was very happy to get this and i'm very happy to pull it pull it out everywhere i am i've pulled it out for a bunch of new people who have not had a chance to play 18x they've played this one and they said wow this is a really good game it gives you it gives you a lot of the flavor of 18x but not the heaviness of 18x so if you're looking for the lighter end it's something that's worth getting into like i said the stock market is short the track lane, you get to do two tracks at a time, so the map builds a lot quicker than in some of the 18Xs where you're just building one track at a time. Just everything about the game speeds it up. It, it plays in a short amount of time also. You can play the game in two hours, three hours. If you're playing really slow and you're still getting into it, it might take up to four hours, but that's a short length for an 18X game. I mean, I get the games done in two, two and a half hours usually, so you're not looking at the time investment that you would in others, which is also for me a very big plus to 1846 and why it's one that I would recommend, especially if you want to dabble into 18X. It's one to get first before you go into the heavier, heavier 18X games. So for me, I love 18X. I'm giving this one an awesomeness rating of 10. I know I don't give many 10s, 
but I'm giving this one a 10, not only because it's an introductory level one, but because the components are so good. This blows away any other components of any 18X game I've ever played. And just for that, I'm giving you the extra thing from a nine to a 10. And this is one that, go out and get it. It's available at Cool Stuff. If you really want to get into 18X, get this one, you won't regret it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.